In this video, I want to focus on Lenz's law and how we could use it to determine the direction of a current in a coil when an induced EMF is present. And the basic idea behind Lenz's law is that an induced EMF will always give rise to a current whose magnetic field opposes the original change in flux that created it. So let's start with an example. Let's say if we have this coil of wire and to the right we have a magnetic field that is constant and it's pointing out of the page. Now we're going to move this coil to the right. So eventually it's going to be exposed to this magnetic field. And the magnetic field that's entering the center of the coil, the inside part, will increase as we move to the right. And therefore, the magnetic flux will increase. Now keep in mind, the induced EMF is proportional to the rate of change of the magnetic flux. The faster it changes, the greater the induced EMF. And notice that we have the negative sign. So if the change is positive, the induced EMF will be negative. It's going to oppose that change. So that negative sign tells us that it's opposite to the original change in flux. So if the flux is increasing, the induced EMF will give rise to a current that will create a magnetic field that will be in opposition to this one. So the external magnetic field is out of the page. So I'm going to use a circle to represent that. Now the induced current is going to try to oppose the increase in flux. And so it's going to create an induced magnetic field that is in opposition to this one. So it's going to be going into the page. And it's going to be going into the page everywhere inside of the coil. So now let's focus on this segment of the wire. So the current is going to flow in such a way that on the right side, we're going to have an X. On the left side, a dot. So the magnetic field will be flowing in this direction. Into the page on the left side, out of the page on the right side. And this is for this section of wire. So now using the right-hand rule, let's say if, let's review the right-hand rule when you wrap your hand around a pen. So if the current was going this way, let's just use that for example. Take your hand, wrap it around a pen, and point your thumb in the direction of the current. Your fingers will follow the direction of the magnetic field generated by the current in the wire. So remember this, anytime the current is going up, the magnetic field is going into the page on the right side and out of the page on the left side. So the reverse is true. If the current is going down, the magnetic field created by that current will be out of the page on the right into the page on the left. So this picture matches what we have here. So the current is flowing in this direction in this segment of the wire. So therefore, we know that the current is going in the clockwise direction. Now, if we analyze the coil, on this side, it's going to be X. Let me use a different color. So blue would be the induced magnetic field. It's going to be X here. And then we're going to have a circle there. Now, if you use the right-hand rule for this coil of wire, if you use your right hand and your thumb points to the left, then the current is going to flow into the page at the top and out of the page at the bottom like that. Now for this one, it's going to have this symbol. So it's into the page on the right, out of the page on the left. And this section is going to be opposite to what we have here. So if you wrap your hand around a pen, you can see that's going into the page below the wire, out of the page above it. So notice everywhere at the center that is inside the coil, it's opposite to the external magnetic field because it's trying to oppose it. And so if the flux increases, the induced current will travel in such a way to create an induced magnetic field that's going to oppose the original magnetic field.
which will decrease the increase in flux. So if you attempt to increase the magnetic flux in the coil, the system is going to try to maintain a state of equilibrium. So if you increase the flux, it's going to try to decrease it. If you decrease the flux in the coil, it's going to try to increase it. So let's look at another example where the flux is decreasing. So let's say the magnetic field is going into the page and it's constant. And this time we have a coil of wire and actually let's say the coil of wire is here and we're moving away from the magnetic field. So the external magnetic field is into the page and we wish to move away from it which means that the flux going through the coil is decreasing as you move away from it. Now the system doesn't like that. Since we're decreasing the flux, it's going to try to bring it back to equilibrium. It's going to try to increase the flux. So in order for the system to increase the flux, that's the induced flux, the magnetic field, the induced magnetic field, is going to try to support this decrease in field. So to support it, it's going to be in the same direction as opposed to the opposite direction in the first example. So the same direction means that it's going to be x. So when we draw this coil, on the inside, everywhere on the inside of this coil should be an x. So here, on the outside, should be a dot. That's for the induced magnetic field. So now we can determine the current. So let's just focus on one side. I'm going to focus on this side. So to the right we have a dot, to the left we have an x. So if you use the right hand rule, and you need to do it in such a way that your fingers curl in this direction, you want the magnetic field to be going like this. And so your fingers has to follow that direction. So the current is going in that direction. So once again, it's flowing clockwise, like the last problem. Let's try another example. So let's say if we have a long wire and there's a current flowing in this direction and there's a circular coil of wire above it. So if the current in the wire is decreasing, what is the direction of the induced current in the circular coil? Now first, we need to determine the magnetic field generated by this wire. So using the right hand rule, if you point your thumb to the right, your fingers should curl in this direction. It should be coming out of the page at the top and going into the page at the bottom. So since the coil is above the wire, we're focused on this magnetic field. It's out of the page above it. So the external magnetic field created by the wire the straight wire is out of the page and the flux due to this wire that's passing through this coil it's decreasing because the current is decreasing so if the current decreases the magnetic field created by that current uh, decreases which means we have a decrease in flux and the system doesn't like that it's going to try to increase the flux bring it back to equilibrium so it needs to create an induced magnetic field that will increase the flux. In order to increase it, the induced magnetic field, should it be in the same direction as the external magnetic field or in the opposite direction? This is the most important question you need to have answered because that determines the direction of the induced current. So if the system tries to support the decrease in magnetic flux, it has to be in the same direction. If it tries to oppose the increase in magnetic flux, it has to be in the opposite direction. But when it supports a decrease in magnetic flux, it has to be in the same direction. So everywhere inside the coil, the induced magnetic field, which I'm going to use in red, has to be coming out of the page, which means everywhere outside of that, it has to be going into the page. So let's focus on this section. So we have a coil of wire. On the left side, it's out of the page. On the right side, it's into the page. So the magnetic field 
needs to be going in this direction, the induced magnetic field. And so using the right hand rule, your fingers have to be in this direction. You have to hold it like this. Notice that your thumb is pointing up. So therefore, the current in this section is upward. So if that's the case, the current is traveling in the counterclockwise direction. So that's the direction of the current in this loop. It's counterclockwise. And so that's how you could use Lenz's law to determine the direction of the induced current in the coil. You just got to follow this process. So remember, the system is going to try to maintain a state of equilibrium. So if you try to increase the magnetic flux flowing through a coil, the system is going to try to decrease it. So it's going to generate an induced current that will generate its own induced magnetic field to decrease the increase in flux. If you try to decrease the flux, the system wants to bring it back to equilibrium. So it's going to try to increase the flux. And that's the basic concept behind Lenz's law. It's really just the system trying to maintain a state of equilibrium.